Get started. On the right is the bus. In front of you is the bus. In front of you is the bus number 73. In front of you is the bus number 73. In front of you is the bus number 73. In front of you is the bus number 170. In front of you is the bus number 170. In front of you is the bus number 170. Hey, what is up everybody, it's Ivan here and as you may have guessed this is gonna be a ridiculously exciting video because in this video we're going to, we're going to talk about the uh, AI computer vision app uh, on Android that I built with my good good friend Peter uh, that that's capable of detecting buses, their open, their closed doors and as well most importantly being able to read their bus numbers. But this is where the video gets really exciting because we're not just going to talk about the app. Uh, in the second part of the video, I will actually discuss in great detail uh, the combination of, ne of neural nets and the whole like idea behind the count neural nets working there to actually accomplish the task of like reading the bus numbers. So we'll talk about how I train the neural nets, where I gather the data, what is the whole design idea, architecture of how that was all put together on the AI computer vision side. And this is like not it. In the third part of the video, I will actually uh, share with you the code. So I will open source the app. Uh, I will put the code on GitHub as well as upload the entire Android Studio project on my Google Drive and drop you a link. As well as I will uh, drop the links to the weights of the neural networks used there. So so that you know if you have an idea of a cool app to build, so long as you uh, drop the link to this YouTube channel uh, and this video wherever like you want to use it, like you can do that. And you can like build cool stuff. Uh, so. Does that sound exciting? I think it sounds exciting as it can be. Uh, so guys, uh, let's get started. So, uh, the app is intended to help visually impaired people. Uh, and, you know, that basically, you know, says a lot about, you know, how it was designed. You know, apart from the basic idea that it's supposed to be able to uh, read the open or closed doors, detect buses and their bus numbers. Uh, the fact that it was designed to help visually impaired people also dictates the fact that the interface is, you know, is as simple as it just can be, you know, right? It's, it's you know, you just launch the app, it tells you let's get started, and uh, you just point the camera to where the potential bus might be, or, you know, if you, like, hear the sound of the engines, but, but you, like, can't read the number, you can point the camera and it'll uh, tell you uh, what the bus number is. It's been trained on the huge 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 range of you know images and data bus related so it can you know work on like european buses you know russian buses uh since you know a bunch of images i i took for training you know were like from the uh streets of, you know the city that i live in i'll talk about more in the second part of the video of the video uh so yeah works in huge variety of buses you know just point the camera then help visually impaired people uh, the app <coughs> supports two languages, right? As of as of today, basically it's Russian and it's English. Uh, as you heard, basically if your uh, phones in if your phone language is Russian, it's going to be in Russian. If it's any other language, it's going to be English. And yeah, so as you have seen, it works. It's right now. It is on. Uh, it's on Google Play, so anybody who has like an Android phone can download it. It's about uh, 170 megabytes uh, because you know the neural net weights they can be quite uh, quite expensive in terms of space. However, you know it's probably uh, you know if the app can be useful to somebody, it's probably not a big uh, price to pay. I guess uh, most important part is that like it works and. So uh, the app was built with my friend Peter Gordienko and uh, you know I would not have done that without him uh, and this is pretty much a collaborative work right there so uh, where I basically handled you know everything related to running neural nets on Android and OpenCV uh, stuff like on Android as well as you know gathering the data labeling the data coming up with the architecture for neural networks 
training and building uh, the neural networks for you know performing the task and he handled the actual systems that download the weights that uh, allow for two languages to function that allow uh, for the sorting algorithms to actually you know post process what the neural nets output and turn that into the comprehensible uh, speech that the person can hear as you heard in the beginning so uh yeah i will leave link to peter's github in the description uh you can check it out and follow him and uh, yeah so guys are you excited now let's actually dive into the neural network side of things and the reason why i think this app is such a cool uh use case for applied computer vision is that what we have there is actually two uh separate unrelated unrelated different neural networks working together to uh accomplish the task basically so what we have there is a yellow version 3 tiny object detector and a tensorflow multi-digit number classifier so uh the way it works is that we have a, a yellow version 3 tiny object detector that detects basically four classes it detects the class bus uh opened or closed doors that's three classes and then the fourth class is a bus number now this is kind of like the uh whole idea of why it's a uh of like of like why it's a cool use case right because uh what we have there is uh, so this is kind of like the whole thing about why it's such a cool use case because the fourth class there is a bus number and so what what i would like to explain right now is how it can be cool and uh useful to actually uh, use separate neural network, different neural network architectures in a way that take advantages of their architectures. Now, here's what I mean. Uh, when object detector detects a bus, like it's useful for the object detector to look at the entire picture and see a bus in that picture. When we're detecting bus doors, uh, it's useful to see the entire bus, right? Like, uh, it's and also it can be useful to like see the entire picture. Like, is uh, are there like people say walking in the doors outside of the boundaries of the bus like this can be a clue that the doors are open like at least i can't imagine that neural network doesn't pick up on that in the training data because you really often you know when doors are open, open like somebody uh, like walks into the doors so you know when we're detecting the bus it's useful to see that like it's on the road and like there are other cars there when we're detecting doors it's useful to see it can be useful to see the entire image especially the of course, it's useful to see the bus there, which is a part of the entire image. But when we detect a bus number, the point here is that it's just one class. It's the fourth class in the yellow, uh, in the tiny yellow object detector, and it's a bus number. So what does that mean? Is that uh, each bus number on like they're they're obviously you know their bus numbers they're written differently. They're in different places. that are have different fonts different colors different sizes different digits in them uh but they are a bus number and when we and when we kind of treat all bus numbers as one class right we, we 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 can take advantage of the fact that an object detector given enough good quality training data can generalize uh what a bus number looks like it's gonna be like it's that thing that has like those like digit looking squishy like lines uh sometimes in the front they're usually big and uh, they can be on the sides you know like it can learn like general features it doesn't have to learn each digit it can learn general features uh about what a bus number looks like in fact like in this network that was running in the app the training data was you know to augment the training data like uh you know like it was flipped so some numbers it's so like they weren't actually like, they were like flipped numbers so w what it's learning in there is like a uh a bus number like what are what are like general features that like all bus numbers have, have in common you know ideally it learns that and if it works as you can see like probably it learned some of that at least so we treat the fourth class and this is like, you know, like the first important lesson here as a, it would treat a bus number as an object and we're trying to teach the object detector to generalize to generalize on how uh, a bus number looks like you know whether it's in the side whether it's in the front whether there are like different fonts different uh, places it's written it's a bus number and given enough quality data it can actually generalize uh, what a bus number is just just like it can generalize what a person is whether whether like a person is just a hand the person is the person the person is like wearing like uh, a hat or something the person is you know uh, wearing like a hood or you know just like it can generalize what different 
objects look like and still treat them as one object, it can do so with a bus number. Now, this may not be the most surprising thing, but here's what's useful here, right? Remember, you know, when we're detecting the bus, it's useful to see the entire picture. When we're detecting the doors, it's useful to see the entire picture and the entire bus. But when we, and when we detect the bus number, when we detect like where the bus number, uh, where the bus number is located on the bus, it's useful to see the entire bus because like, usually there are like no, say no more than like three bus numbers on one side, and usually they are in specific places of the bus. So it's kind of like useful to see the entire picture there. However, uh, to, to, to detect a bus number. However, uh, when we're trying to read the bus number, we don't need to see the sky, we don't need to see the ground, we don't need to see the people walking through the doors or whether the doors are even opened or closed. Like, we don't need none of that. Uh, when we're reading the bus numbers, we really care, you know, here's this set of pictures, here, here's like this cropped, this is how the app works. Like, uh, you know, when we're trying to read the bus numbers, we only care, like, this is this small square, small rectangle where the bus number is written, what is numbers written on loose pixels? And that's, and that's where the, uh, that's kind of the idea here, is that in order to read the bus number, we don't need to see the entire picture. So we treat a bus number as an, as a class in the object detector uh, that was trained uh, on a bunch of bus images from it's the entire data set for this guy is about like 7,000 images that are labeled by hand and like what I never forget that one like crazy day where with me like sitting and uh, labeling like 6,000 bus images like in one sitting setting sitting or setting uh -huh. uh, who knows but labeling 6,000 bus images like that was kind of crazy but yeah uh, with the images taken from Google, about like 2000 something, then a bunch of images that I took from my streets in my city where I live in this video, and then the other are the images from uh, the from 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 Coco dataset because Coco dataset has got buses and objects, it's got great diversity of buses, and the fact that the buses there are already labeled and you have to just label the doors and numbers is also kind of pretty useful. So when I have video on Coco data set and how you can read it and for like bounding boxes and stuff and like if you want to learn more about Coco data set I will leave link in the description. So uh, we treat bus number as an object, as a class and we go solving the problem with the notion that in order to read the bus number all we really need, we only need to see the entire picture, all we really need is to be able to uh, see the uh, ROI, the area of interest of the number. So, and this is where object detector comes in, we train it on the generalized class that like, hey, this is what a bus number looks like, and then we uh, train a uh, classifier, so we basically, object detector detects the, the number, crops it, and then we pass it through the uh, classifier, in my case, it's a classifier based on the famous multi-digit uh, classification paper uh, that I, I trained in that and basically even built it myself, it's, you know, pretty straight, straightforward stuff. And uh, it was trained on the SV chain dataset. Basically, it takes pixels, uh, the cropped number as an input, a multi-digit number, and then the network has like several output nodes uh, where it's capable to detect uh, multiple digits. Like, say, if you give it like the picture of one, it'll be one. Give it the picture of twenty-four, it'll say like twenty-four. Give it the picture of four hundred and. Uh, for 4037, 437 if it was trained correctly. So the idea there is that it can detect a multi-digit number with really good accuracy uh, for the number has to be up to four digits. Because it was trained in this SV chain dataset and this SV chain dataset is basically the dataset of house numbers. And so there are ra rarely house numbers that are more than four digits, but it's right, it's just about perfect for uh, reading the bus numbers and bus numbers are also rarely more than for digits themselves. So we have an object detector capable of finding buses, that are open or closed doors, and then it trained on the general class of a bus number. Uh, knowing that we only need to use the detector to identify wh where the bus number is written. Then we, uh, in the app, we also like expand a bit the bounding box of the detected numbers that it's definitely in the square since the multi-digit classifier can handle a bit of like noise and uh, number doesn't have to be centered perfect perfectly. Uh, and then we pass it through the multi-digit classifier that essentially like, gives us like number like 60 or 70 or 74. So two important lessons, right? Uh, think about when it's important uh, to when it's important for the network to see the um, 
entire entire picture to detect something like it can be useful for buses but not that useful for bus numbers second then you know uh say you know there can be like data sets like a sv chain that can be uh really really applicable to like you know say reading bus numbers like house numbers bus numbers uh are kind of similar in that regard so uh yeah basically this is how and so when it all comes together you know the object detector detects buses open and closed doors detects a bus number uh the bounding box of a bus number gets expanded and gets passed uh through the multi-digit classifier it'll give the uh answer to like what what's written there in those pixels and then us knowing what's like written in those pixels uh we can uh yeah, then basically it's all get post processed, post processed, post processed and voiced. So yeah, let's here's see. like that was what we have. A bus number is a general class. Uh, then we don't need to like know the entire, see the entire image to read the bus number, and that you know we can like use as we trained set that's like can perfectly work on reading any other digits. So that's how the neural network side of things is you know realize there how the two separate neural nets are working together to allow the app to work and uh, yeah this is how it goes so now let's actually chat about the open sourcing part because uh, as i've mentioned uh yeah basically i will be putting the code on github and i will also be like you know the main activity the activity xml android manifesto but i will also be uploading the entire android studio project it's an android studio app I'll be uploading the entire project on uh, Google Drive and I'll drop a link uh, in the description as well as I will drop the links to the uh, weights of the two neural networks that you can run uh, and if you want to learn more about like what's going on there I have an entire series of videos of how you can train your own custom uh, YOLO version 3 object detector and uh, I have video on switch and data set, on Coco data set, on the data set for faces, MDB wiki and I have the entire series of videos on uh, Android development with OpenCV. So if you want to learn how OpenCV works in Android and like how you can like actually not just say you know copy the code but, but like understand that have the entire Android series, I will link to all of that in the description. And so for so of open sourcing, you'll get you know, the code, the Android Studio project, and uh, the ways for the neural networks. Uh, all I'm asking is that like if uh, you find this application useful in creating something cool. Uh, if it benefits you, uh, just you know, drop the link to this YouTube video and in and this YouTube channel in the credits. And uh, yeah, if that helps you, just drop the link to this YouTube video and this YouTube channel. And I hope that you build uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of cool stuff with it. And so, guys, uh, since this app is you know operational, it's on Google Play. And if you know a visual impaired person and you think. Uh, you know it might who who might benefit from using this application or somebody who might you know benefit from seeing this i please encourage you to share it with them or like with anybody maybe it's like a developer and the open source part may be useful for them or it's like an uh it's a, a computer vision person and the use case of how the two separate neural networks are working can be useful for that person uh i encourage you to share that with them and uh for you if you have an android phone uh it's the app is in google play it's about 170 megabytes and so i really encourage you if you are excited and if you benefit from this video you can uh, download the app check it out like leave a review and you can tweet at me like on twitter at ivan grav basically the pictures that you got like take some screenshots of how it, like basically it would be really interesting for me to see how it does on your streets in your city and so let me know what you think in the comments uh basically i replied to everything if you have like questions and stuff uh if you would like to support me ways to that are in the description thank you so much if you do and uh please uh, consider subscribing because you know more cool content is coming and uh and then then yeah smash the like button to let me know that you guys are as excited as i am and i'm also uh you know happy 2020 2020 uh, everybody and i hope this is going to be an amazing year for all of us so uh Bye-bye, hope, hope, hope you find this video useful.